time I read, uh, you are coming for the first time to the conference Atlantic Dialogues organized in Marrakech by the Policy Center for the New South. Mm -hmm. What was your main message today in the plenary session you attended? We were in a panel with a former president of Argentina and we were talking about the new winds, the new future for Latin America. We are ending a cycle, I think, in the year 2020 and opening for a new decade. So that fits with the overall thematic of the conference. I think the quality of these dialogues is very high. The quality of the speakers, of the panels, the quality of the people, the, the human qualities of the people mm -hmm. are really remarkable. So I am very happy that I was able to come and participate. And what was your the experience you what is the experience you can draw from your your the fact you were president of Ecuador? I was president in a very bad moment for my country. And of course that means that it was bad for me as well, for myself. Because our main export is oil. And the oil price went down to seven dollars per barrel. And the Ecuadorian government uses the oil revenues to pay for everything, like salaries to public servants, providers, contractors, etc., external debt, etc. So the moment that the oil price is going so low, it was the lowest price since we started exporting oil in 1972. We had a lot of problems, a lot of demonstrations, a lot of protesters. And this happens sometimes in, in life. You understand the people that are protesting on the streets. They don't understand why you are making the decisions you made or why you are not doing different things. Because problems are complex, solutions are complex, the implementation of solutions mm -hmm. are complex. There's a sense of urgency in the population, the frust sense of frustration. Many times plans need time to be put into effect. Mm -hmm. So that kind of reflection about my own life, the things I was able to achieve, like a peace treaty with Peru that ended what President Clinton called, quote, the longest armed conflict in this hemisphere, mm -hmm. unquote. Mm -hmm. Or I decided to dollarize the economy of Ecuador. and. Next month, in January 2020, the dollarization will have its 20th birthday. So that has become the longest uh, policy in a currency policy in the, in the country. So those are the good points, the good moments. At the same time, we faced a lot of problems. So this kind of reflections from a human level, mm -hmm. we're just human beings occupying public positions trying to do our best, having some successes, some problems, some things that didn't happen as we wanted. I think it is necessary to share with others, okay. to be more realistic mm -hmm. about life mm -hmm. and public service. Do you, do you think that the span of time the politicians have a mandate, a, president, a presidential mandate, five or seven years, four, five or seven years, is enough? to deal with the problems? Um, is is the, the, the political time in phase with the time that the problem need, need to be f actually fixed? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a question, a very good question, very difficult to, to answer with just one phrase. Mm -hmm. I would say, in the ideal world, you would have political parties with clear ideas about the present and the future, the problems and the solutions and with the mandate from the people to implement those solutions. So in those cases, you have a political party, the political party has a leader, the leader ends his or her term, then comes another person, either from the same party or the different party. So you have a kind of succession instead of a lot of interruptions. And some problems need that kind of treatment. Mm -hmm. They took many years to be formed. They need some years to be solved. 
is part of the nature of the problem. Yes. Some other problems are different. Mm. They can appear like a mushroom. And if you are lucky, and you can read what it is going on right now there, and you can get a good idea, you can solve many times a problem. And this happens because the stars are aligned. So both things are true in my experience. Mm. Thank you. Um, what uh, is the fact that you are of Lebanese origin um, mm -hmm. make you different in Latin America? Do you have a curious or attentive eye on what's going on in the MENA region? Yeah, my grandparents emigrated from Lebanon mm -hmm. to Ecuador. And my great grandfather on my mother's side emigrated from Hamburg in Germany. Mm -hmm. So the, the first lesson I received in my life was the lesson of tolerance. My grandparents were Maronites from Lebanon. My great-grandfather was a Lutheran from Germany. And uh, we were a Catholic family in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. So the main role is respect the other beliefs, the, other, the other's faith, and do not make differences in perceptions, in this case, religious perceptions, uh, the cause for conflicts. Mm -hmm. And probably that is something that you learn in your home. There are no lessons or books. It's just the way you behave, the way you see how your family behaves. And that's why I have dedicated a big part of my life to conflict resolution. That's what I do now. I teach in negotiation. I'm affiliated with a program on negotiation at Harvard Law School. Mm -hmm. And I teach in negotiation at the Kennedy School. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that it is in our hands to get better agreements, to live more in peace, to be more friendly with each other. What's your take on this relationship between Latin America and Africa? I would say that it is part of the colonial times. Mm. I mean the origin, mm. not on the main cause or the actual mm. cause. Mm. Because when it happened in Latin America, when we were colonies of Spain, part of the rules of the game was what the colonies could not trade among themselves. You had to trade with Spain, and Spain, let's say, Ecuador or Quito at that time, with Spain, and Spain with Guatemala. So that's the way Quito would relate to Guatemala. Mm -hmm. So we have this thing first. Second, uh, we have been um, living for so many, I would say, centuries, thinking that we should look up north, either Europe first or the United States later. But if you look, look at the maps, Sabine, mm -hmm. carefully, imagine the shape of South America and the shape of Africa. It's like they were one piece. They and were now they one are piece together, uh, yeah. yes, absolutely. A flight from uh, Dakar in Senegal to Rio de Janeiro takes, in Brazil, takes about four hours. Exactly. So we are so close. Mm. And we have many common problems. We have had many solutions created in our part of the world, both sides, that we can share. The best organization I have been part of was a union of mayors of capital cities in Ibero-America. Because all the cities have the same problems. You have to deal with garbage and potholes and uh, parks, etc., etc. And there's always one mayor someplace that is doing a great job in that field. So you get a phone, call the mayor, says you have a great team doing with recuperation of historic cities, for example. And he says, yes. So can you send me a couple of people to my, to my seat so we can talk? He says, yes. And the advantage of mayors is they don't have all the protocol and all the complications that presidents have. You can travel without any problem. You don't need an agenda to announce that first. It's easier to connect like that. Mm -hmm. And if you look to the world from a satellite, mm -hmm. you don't see countries. You see cities. 
That's true. So we can be closer than we are now, and we hope that the South-South dialogues and connections will increase. Thank you very much, Mr. President.